elegant delta wing design has become the hallmark of French jet fighters. This video ordnance program examines the origins and future prospects of the Mirage jet. For nearly four decades, the jet fighter designs of Dassault Breguet Aviation have been synonymous with French combat aircraft. The name Dassault was a new one in the late 1940s, but one with strong historical roots in the history of French aviation. France had been one of the pioneers of military aviation. In World War I, France built more combat aircraft than any other nation. Names like Newport, Spad, and Breguet were familiar to combat pilots the world over. In the years after the war, the French aviation industry flourished. One of the new firms was Block Aviation. Their aircraft included the MB-200 bomber and the radial-engined MB-150 series of fighters. Following the fall of France in 1940, the head of Block Aviation, Marcel Block, went underground, joining the French resistance. Bloch's wartime code name, Dassault, would become far better known after the war as the newly renamed company helped France enter the jet age. In 1947, Dassault Aviation began work on the first generation of French swept-wing fighters. The Ouragan, meaning hurricane, entered French service in 1952. Ouragan evolved into the first supersonic French fighter, the Mystère 4, the most successful French fighter aircraft of the 1950s. The Mystère was typical of fighters of its generation. Powered by a Verdon jet engine, the Mystère 4 was capable of top speeds of 750 miles per hour, exceeding the speed of sound. Its armament was heavy for the time, a pair of large caliber 30 mm auto cannons. First entering service in 1955, the last Mystère 4A was not retired until 1982, after nearly 30 years of service and a credit to the robust construction of the aircraft. In 1958, the Mystère 4 evolved into the Super Mystère B2, a more refined design capable of speeds up to Mach 1.3. The 1950s were a time of great change in aviation design, as new speed and altitude records were being continually broken. At Dassault Aviation, studies were underway of a fundamentally new aircraft design, capable of double Mach speeds. The configuration selected for the new Dassault fighter was the Delta Wing, a shape which would become characteristic of Dassault fighters in the decades to come. The new fighter was called Mirage III, entered French Air Force service in 1961. The Mirage III was intended primarily as an all-weather interceptor. Until the 1960s, most multifunction radars had been so complex that they required a two-man crew, a pilot and a dedicated radar operator. The Cyrano II radar of the Mirage had reached a level of miniaturization and sophistication that it could be managed by the pilot himself. The Mirage was the first French fighter capable of Mach 2 speeds, powered by a Snecma turbojet with afterburner. For high-altitude interception missions, the Mirage 3's power could be supplemented by a rocket pack. The standard armament of the Mirage 3 is a pair of deeper 30mm cannon mounted in the belly. As was amply demonstrated by Israeli Mirage jets in the 1967 Mideast War, these weapons can be devastatingly effective when used in the ground attack role. The Mirage 3 has carried a variety of missile weapons in its long career in the French Air Force.
je crois que tous les les avions ont une histoire. I think that each aircraft has its own special story. And in the Mirage case, the particular event was the Six-Day War in Israel. It made this aircraft extremely popular around the world. And it made it the symbol of a maneuverable, high-performance aircraft. Also, it became the symbol of French technology. The classic shape of the Mirage 3 helped serve as the basis for a much larger Delta Wing combat aircraft, the Mirage 4 bomber. Though similar in shape, the Mirage 4 is a large supersonic strike aircraft designed primarily for the delivery of strategic nuclear weapons. It formed one leg of the French strategic nuclear triad from the 1960s to the 1980s. The Mirage 3 airframe proved very adaptable to new concepts in aviation design. In the early 1960s, a Mirage airframe was rebuilt as the Balzac 5 to study vertical takeoff fighters. Larger and heavier test bed, the Mirage 3V, was also designed. The Mirage 3V was the first vertical takeoff aircraft to exceed Mach 2 in level flight. But the aircraft did not have enough range to make it a practical combat aircraft. The classic Delta Wing had shortcomings in some flight regimes. So in the late 1960s, Dassault began to explore variable geometry wings with the Mirage 3G fighter. Variable geometry wings offer the lift and control necessary at slow speeds, such as during takeoff and landing, and the reduced drag desired in high-speed flight. As attractive as the variable geometry concept is on paper, its main disadvantage in aircraft design is its added complexity and weight, particularly in a fighter the size of the Mirage. The outcome of the Mirage 3G was not a variable geometry fighter, but rather a new fighter with a more conventional wing arrangement, the Mirage F1. The Mirage F-1 marked a shift in emphasis in Dassault fighter designs. The Mirage 3 had been designed primarily as an interceptor. By the 1970s, most air forces desired a multifunction aircraft, able to dogfight enemy aircraft, as well as to attack ground targets with equal ease. The ground attack strike mission demanded greater range and endurance than the Mirage 3's interceptor role. The new Mirage F-1 offered double the range in the ground attack role and a substantial increase in maneuverability. The Mirage F-1 entered service with the French Air Force in 1973. It is a true multi-role aircraft capable of carrying out strike missions with bombs and guided missiles or engaging in dogfights. Its standard air-to-air -air armament is the Super 530 missile or the Magic Heat-Seeking missile. The Mirage F-1 could also be adapted to the naval strike mission, armed with the famous Exocet anti-ship missile. The Mirage F-1 has formed the backbone of the French Air Force's tactical air arm. For a fighter test pilot, the way an aircraft handles is determined in part by the method in which the fighter is controlled. In traditional aircraft, when the pilot moves the control stick in the cockpit, the control surfaces such as the rudder, stabilizer and ailerons move directly in response to his commands. In recent generations of aircraft, New innovations have been made in flight controls to assist the pilot in flying the aircraft. I think that the Dassault aircraft have kept pace with the evolution of aircraft from the other manufacturers around the world. We have gone from the first post-World War II aircraft, which were barely supersonic, 
all the way to supersonic aircraft requiring powerful onboard computers and superior performance. In this area, flight controls. Dassault has been ahead of its time. This has always been one of the strong trends in the Dassault company, the know-how to create flight controls which were especially suited to the aerodynamic characteristics of its aircraft. This evolution occurred quite naturally, from mechanical flight controls to electric flight controls, then to systems which aided the pilot, and then to systems driven by computers. On bombers like the Mirage 4, there was already an electrical flight control system with a manual backup in the event of electrical failure. The evolution proceeded with the appearance of control configured vehicles, comparable to those of the F-16 family. This has meant that Dassault was completely ready to build fly-by-wire aircraft, first the analog systems, and now digital systems, as on the Rafale. In France, fly-by-wire was introduced on the Mirage 2000. Fly-by-wire has had a critical effect in giving the modern fighter plane greater maneuverability. In fighter plane design, maneuverability has always been a much sought-after commodity. Maneuverability can be critical in a dogfight, not only for getting onto an opponent's tail, but also evading an enemy aircraft. In aircraft design, maneuverability and stability are opposing requirements. A very stable aircraft is often not a very maneuverable aircraft. With traditional flight control systems, especially mechanical systems, an aircraft had to be designed with inherent stability, otherwise it would have been uncontrollable in flight. With the advent of advanced electronics, aircraft designers were able to satisfy both the demands for stable handling in most flight regimes with increased maneuverability when desired. A new concept arose called CCV for control configured vehicles. The new aircraft were inherently unstable to increase their potential for maneuverability. But to make them controllable by the pilot, the electronic flight control system's computers monitored every movement of the aircraft and every control of the pilot. The computer operated the flight controls even without the pilot's attention to make certain that the aircraft remained on its intended course and did not lose control. Fly-by-wire allowed Dassault to return to the classic Delta design in the new Mirage 2000 fighter. New flight controls could compensate for any shortcomings in the classic delta wing shape. There are some small differences between deltas with traditional flight controls and the modern deltas. The new flight controls correct the faults that were characteristic of the classic delta. When one reaches to a great angle of attack on a classic delta, the wing loses lift and the aircraft becomes difficult to fly. On the Mirage 2000, the flight controls discourage the plane from reaching these angles, and so the plane always remains flyable. So for the pilot, it's much easier. We've been able to add more slats on the fly-by-wire deltas, which considerably increases the capabilities of the aircraft at low airspeed. You couldn't put all these on a classic delta wing, since the plane would have been really unflyable. It's only the electronic flight controls which allow the pilot to fly this aircraft. Superficially, the Mirage 2000 resembles its ancestor, the Mirage 3, more than its immediate predecessor, the Mirage F1. But in fact, its role is closer to the F1. The Mirage 2000 was designed from the outset as a multi-role aircraft, capable both in the air-to-air -air dogfighting arena and in the ground attack strike fighter role. Two distinct families of Mirage 2000s have been built, the Mirage 2000C 
and its latest evolution, the Mirage 2005, are primarily intended for the fighter role. To provide long-range, deep strike capability with modern guided munitions, a two-seat version has been developed, the Mirage 2000N, and its recent evolution, the 2000D. The second seat in the strike fighter version is occupied by a weapons officer who manages the attack radar and weapons system. The capabilities of different Mirage 2000 variants is determined by their avionics, the electronic systems aboard the aircraft. The new Mirage 2000D is a good case in point. It incorporates a new avionics and fire control system, which makes it exceptionally well suited to the strike role. Guided munitions are a key ingredient in the success of modern strike aircraft. Mirage 2000 strike fighters are equipped with a variety of different strike weapons. French aircraft during the Gulf War used the laser-guided AS-30L missile. This could be guided with such precision that it could be aimed at the doors of hardened Iraqi aircraft shelters with devastating results. One of the unique weapons on the drawing boards for the Mirage 2000 is the Apache. The Apache is a standoff munition launched by the Mirage 2000 over a dozen miles from the target so that the Mirage does not have to expose itself to deadly enemy air defenses. The small Apache flies into the target area and delivers its weapons against the target. These can include specialized munitions for attacking massed tank formations. Another munition which can be carried by the Apache is designed for disabling airfields and runways. In contrast to the strike family, the Mirage 2000C and the new Mirage 2005 are primarily intended for the classic fighter role of engaging enemy aircraft. New advances in electronics are essential here as well. Missiles are now the key ingredient in dogfighting. In recent air wars, the side which could engage first, at the greatest range, was usually the winner. Key to spotting the enemy first and engaging is the aircraft's radar. The key capability is to be able to engage from as far away as possible, as well as to be able to engage several aircraft simultaneously without being drawn into close-range dogfighting. This is basically a long-range missile, and it was designed around the carrying capacity of the aircraft you see behind me. It can carry four Mika missiles under the fuselage. The radar is integrated with the fire controls, so these four missiles can be controlled simultaneously and fired at close ranges as well. In older generations of fighters, Radars could only track opposing aircraft which were at the same altitude or above. Radar had a hard time tracking enemy aircraft which were flying near the ground. The enemy aircraft got lost in the ground clutter. But advances in radar now permit contemporary fighters like the Mirage 2005 to locate and attack enemy aircraft flying below them called look-down, shoot-down capability. Look-down capability is very important. First of all, a large portion of the threat consists of air vehicles flying close to the ground, whether unmanned cruise missiles or piloted aircraft. So the mission of the fighter plane as it's employed these days 
expects that aircraft will be able to patrol as long as possible at altitudes where they do not burn up a lot of fuel and be able to intercept aircraft at all altitudes, including low altitudes. So it's very important that the aircraft be capable not only of identifying aircraft underneath them near the ground, but also of guiding missiles towards these targets. This wasn't the case with missiles that were deployed on the Mirage III generation. The combat capabilities of the Mirage jets were demonstrated during Operation Desert Storm, codenamed Operation Darguet by French forces. Ground attack missions were performed by a squadron of Jaguars and a squadron of Mirage F-1s. Mirage 2000s of the 5th Fighter Squadron operated out of Al-Assar Air Base on combat air patrol missions to prevent Iraqi air attacks into Saudi Arabia. Mirage jets have been widely exported and have seen combat around the globe. The Mirage III was first made famous by the Israeli Air Force in the 1967 war. The Mirage was later improved in Israel and evolved into the Kafir fighter. Another Air Force which has used the Mirages extensively in combat is the South African Air Force. The South Africans have flown the Mirage III and today, the Mirage F-1. We chose the, the Mirage F-1 because we have previously had the Mirage uh, family of aircraft in our Air Force before. We had operated and we were still operating the Mirage 3. So it was a logical um, conclusion to uh, stay with the Mirage family and select the Mirage F-1. However, secondly, uh, the Mirage F-1 fitted our role that we saw for the future of the Air Force in that it has uh, both roles, air-to-air -air, as well as air-to-ground strike. We operate two variants of the Mirage F-1, the AZ and the CZ. The AZ is a primary role is air-to-ground, secondary role air-to-air, -air, whereas the Mirage F-1 CZ is the air-to-air -air role and secondary air-to-ground. Mirage F-1 has seen uh, combat in um, southern Angola, as well as other um, areas in Africa. We have flown over 1,800 combat missions in both the air-to-ground as well as the air-to-air -air role. The missions were mainly in the air-to-air -air role interception as well as uh, combat air patrols and in the air-to-ground role mainly strike and interdiction roles. During the fighting over Angola, the Mirage F-1s were confronted with a wide array of advanced Soviet radar-guided anti-aircraft missiles. Low-level strike tactics were able to overcome these formidable defenses. For us, in order to survive, we had to fly at very low level, and that uh, was anything from 20 to 50 feet, depending on the nature of the terrain. And this was done to use uh, dodgy radar systems and also to um, get the supplies on our side. The enemy aircraft that we encountered were basically MiG-21s, uh, MiG-23s, and uh, Su-22s, the, the other type that we encountered. We didn't lose any aircraft in combat, whereas the enemy uh, lost two MiG-21s, and uh, there was unconfirmed reports of other aircraft lost by them as well. To bolster their forces, the South African Air Force decided to improve their older Mirage 3s, resulting in a modernized variant, the Cheetah. We were flying Mirage 3 CZs, uh, and during air-to-air -air firing, we picked up some problems with the sighting system. And after various discussions, we realized that uh, we could not uh, modify the site to our uh, likes. And there is where the Cheetah project actually started, where we decided to uh, update the old Cheetah or the old Mirage 3 fleet with uh, new avionics, a new sighting system, and a nav weapon system. And as far as combat is concerned, uh, the changes in the, uh, the Cheetah compared to the Mirage 3 uh, has made the aircraft uh, a little bit more maneuverable. Uh, in the old days, it used to be a sustained turning fight. With the change in the Cheetah, you had a better instantaneous, which is uh, what we actually need nowadays in a, a new environment, as far as air combat, air combat is concerned. Mirage 
Polish 2000 and its improved versions will satisfy French needs until the late 1990s. But efforts are already underway to produce a new generation of fighter aircraft, the stealthy Rafale. Rafale began in the early 1980s as a technology demonstrator program. The Rafale A testbed aircraft examined the flight envelope possible with new fly-by-wire controls. Two other key requirements were also desired, supercruise and stealth. Conventional jet fighters get their high speeds by igniting the afterburners of their jet engine. This provides tremendous power, but at the expense of very high fuel consumption. The use of afterburners inevitably means reducing the combat range of the aircraft. New jet engines promise to offer superior power and supersonic flight, even without the use of afterburners. This is called supercruise. The evolution of the Rafale, of course, is an evolution in performance. It's an aircraft much like those being developed for the United States Air Force, able to reach supersonic speeds without using its afterburners. Rafale managed to do that on its first flight. These aircraft are becoming much more discreet. Many stealth features have been incorporated on the Rafale while still retaining its great maneuverability. Aircraft handling has not been compromised by stealthiness because of the improvements which have been made possible by systems integration. These days, it's becoming very difficult when sitting inside the aircraft to separate what is being done by the flight controls from what is being done by the electronic sensors and from what is being done by the power plant to control the flight path, even in the case of employing the weapons. In 1991, the first development aircraft of the Rafale program, called the Rafale C, made its maiden flight. The Rafale, though sharing the classic delta wing design of the Mirage family, has a very sleek, blended body. The body design was selected to reduce the radar signature of the Rafale and so approach invisibility to enemy radars. The Rafale is not intended to be entirely invisible to radar. Full stealth features demanded body shapes that would adversely affect the maneuverability and performance of the aircraft in the fighter role. Rather, a compromise has been reached to incorporate as many stealth features as possible without compromising performance. When it finally reaches production in the latter half of the 1990s, the Rafale will be manufactured both for the French Air Force and French Navy. The Rafale is intended to replace over seven types of aircraft currently in the French inventory. It is intended as a true multi-mission aircraft, able to carry out fighter missions as well as ground and sea strike missions. Even with a change of name, the Rafale continues the tradition of aerodynamic excellence of the Mirage jet.